Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of PD and P-Dubs Unscripted here. P-Dubs, good to be with you. Hey, good to be in the house again in the unscripted studio, whatever we want to call this. Yeah. We're in the studio. In the studio, down the stairs, following the side. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Having a having a great day today. It's Thursday as we're recording. And uh Yeah, it's coming out on March twenty third. Oh no, today's March twenty third yeah, when we're recording. recording. But it is Wednesday, March 29th, as you're listening to this. Yeah, and you know what that is? The day before baseball starts. Oh, day before opening day where every Man. team has hope. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, all hoping for that World Series title. You know, I was just looking up pro sports fanatics here, projections. Okay, lay them on me. So do you want the all baseball or just the divisions are beloved teams reside um let's start with the divisions our beloveds reside since they list the al first so not making preference of the white Sox. it's alphabetical so al central who do you think they have winning the al central all right um do you gotta look and see what teams are in the i do uh well right now they only have them listed in the cactus league okay i'll give you the team names all right hold on i'm gonna say kc well, they have them at third at 81 and 81, seven games back of the first place team. Ooh, all right. All right. Second guess. Uh, hold on. I'm a little hurt that you didn't pick the Sox to win the division. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being realistic. Oh, wow. Uh, it's not going to be the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, actually, that is who they have winning the division. Wow. Because currently, right now in the Cactus League, the. Cleveland Guardians are eight and fourteen. Well, th- well, and that's usually kind of how it holds true, isn't it? Like teams that yeah. do really poorly do well. Yeah, so they have them at eighty-eight and seventy-four. The Guardians. Well, they're not really running away with it. It's so it's a tight race. A little bit, a little bit. And uh, and your beloved are ranked where? Fourth. Fourth with seventy-seven and. No, 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 no. 82 so, game, 80, 80, no. 80, 80 no. 79. No. So they have the Twins, the Twinkies at 86 and 76, two games out. And they have the beloved White Sox, 18 games out of first, projected to go 70 and 92. Ooh. 70 and Ouch. 92. How that hurts. They say the loss of former MVP Jose Abreu will prove majorly detrimental to and the squad, despite a star-powered lineup, is the odd man out in the division. Oh, man. Well, and with your boy Aloy already kind of going oh, down. He's, he's back healthy. He's back oh, he's healthy. Ba- oh, sure. He's back. He's okay. back. Don't worry. And then how about how about Mancata? How's he doing? He's supposed how's, to be, how's his ribs? I think he's supposed to be playing. I think Griffal, is that how we say our name? Pedro Griffal? Yeah, Griffal. Griffal, I think... <laughs> That's uh, what he uh, he said, and uh, you know somebody else who was banged up is going to come back. Andrew Vaughn, he's going to do a minor league. All little. right, okay. But yeah, right. and Timmy Anderson said he's definitely going to play in the World Baseball Classic again. That's nice. So you know we're looking up. We're All right. looking up. That's good. That's but, good. So seventy wins. Hey, yeah. come on, you know, nearly a hundred losses. That's <laughs> well, it's not a hundred. <laughs> but like, what I have to argue here, they say. Abreu is going to be a huge loss. I love, I love Abreu. He was like the only guy that hustled last year. Uh huh. But his stats last year: three hundred four batting average. That's good. Yeah. That's can't beat that. Fifteen home runs. That's that hurts. That's that's replaceable. Yeah, for sure. Seventy five ribbies. That's come on. That's a half a season usually. Yeah, like well, not a half, but but either way, I'm like, it wasn't like he was a world beater last no, year. No. It's not like he's. And trust me, I have a deep love for Jose. Like he's been a stalwart for the White Sox ever since he debuted in 2014. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think, like, at his age now that he's 36, going on, he's 36 years old. Yeah, that's the wrong side of 30, my friends. <laughs> so now we get to your beloved Cubbies, the beloved Cubbies, who are opening day. Against the Milwaukee Brewers in the friendly confines. It's a beautiful day for a ball game. Well, speaking of the friendly confines, when I was at lunch today, yeah. John Greenberg, who, uh, I don't know, is he an athletic writer, I believe? Uh-huh. They announced the new concessions 
at Wrigley Field. Oh, boy. So you ready for this? Before Lay them on me, because, yeah, they're probably going to be so expensive. Crispy chicken bao bun. I don't know what a bao, B-A-O bun is. Me neither. Crispy chicken thigh, Thai chili sauce, baby argula, cucumber, and carrot on a bao bun. How's that sound for you, friends? A lot of bees. A lot of bees. Yeah. Maybe, if that's not your thing, a Greek-loaded fries. Mm, the I gyro, that. gyro meat, feta cheese, kalamata olives, no thank you, tomatoes, red onions, pepper, pepperoncini, and feta cream sauce over a bed of crispy steak fries in a souvenir helmet. Oh, man. All brought to you for the wonderful low price of $30. Yes. <laughs> Now this one, this one has me intrigued. A burger brat. Oh, so yeah. You ready for this? Give it to me. Well, I know there's one thing you're gonna take off. Pickles. So no, no. Split bratwurst filled with brat seasoned ground beef, whatever that is. Okay. <laughs> Cheddar cheese, yellow mustard. Here's what I think you would take off: sauerkraut. Yes. Yeah. On a brooch bun. Okay. Then they have the crispy chicken torta. Homestyle crispy chicken, mayo, ancho cabbage. So there, you're out on that. Cotija co- 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 cheese on a torta roll. There's the queso barilla, barbacoa, Spanish onions, oh. cholula cheese on a crispy flour tortilla, and ancho I love my chili. barbacoa. Do you? Oh, I love it, yeah. And then the last thing, a souvenir beer bat, a 26-ounce souvenir cup, can be filled with beer selection available at pertaining concession mm, stands. Mm. Well, they're up in their game because you know they're they're. I would admit that um, the White Sox have better food options in in the house, uh, whatever you call that place. Well, this year the, the Sox, cell. you know, we this year the Sox. I saw this on their Facebook, and they actually have pitchers. Mm-hmm. They have a manganganda, which is some sort of drink. Then they have the champagne of dogs. Get this, a half pound Vienna beef foot long frank served on a brooch bun and topped with champagne Vidalia relish and habanero mustard. Wow. Then they also have a steak chimichurri sandwich, seared ribeye steak with homemade chimichurri, chimichurri sauce drizzled over top a fresh hoagie butt roll. I would try that. Then they have the authentic turkey, ham, cheddar, Swiss, lettuce, tomatoes, red onions, Louis dressing on a wheat baguette. This is why we need, this is why spring is so great because it brings all this awesome food at the ballpark. And the la- last thing is hog wild smoked rib tips. Oh, man. So those are the new things at our respective stadiums here at, you know, 1060 mm-hmm. West Addison, right, for the beloved Cubs at Wrigley. Yep, yep. And 35th and Shields for the beloved Sox at Comiskey. Mm-hmm. So back to the Cubs division, what their record. So who do you think they got winning the NL Central? Uh, I think the Cardinals. They do have them, 92 and 70. Yep. 92 and 70. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, who's in second? Um, I'm going to say the Brewers. Yep, 86 and 76. Okay. Next up? Uh, um, let me think. I'm tossing it up between. I'm going to say Cincinnati Reds. No. Ooh. They have the Reds at fourth. Okay. And obviously, you're probably not going to guess the Pirates to be in third. No. <laughs> like... So is it the Cubbies? The Cubbies Woo-hoo! are in third. Yeah, baby. At 75 and 87. 75 and 87. So five games better than the Sox. Still a losing under subpar 500. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of unfair when you got to you get to play the Reds and the Pirates all those times. That's kind of <laughs> Come on, do the Pirates even count as a major league baseball oh. team? Oh. We got no Pirates fans that listen to this right. I don't think so. No, I nobody listening from I don't know, Pittsburgh, area. Pittsburgh area. But it says about the Cubs, the Cubs are one of the more improved teams in the MLB with signings including Dansby Swanson, whoever that is. Yeah. Jameson Talion and Cody Bellinger, mm-hmm. a rotation that lacks excitement <laughs> as well as a lower end bullpen keeps this team grounded. 
However, and I have them picking up only one win from last year. Ooh, that's rough. With all those moves, only one extra win. Who's this person that rated all these? That was Pro Sports Fanatics. Oh, okay. Whoever they are. Yeah, I was just trying to look up baseball projections real quick. Let's see. Fangraphs, that's a little more well-known, I think. I don't know. If... Let's see. They have the Cubs projected at 78 wins, but still in third place. Okay. So, you know, you can take that. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to watch them because it's all kind of new, you know, and, like, there's a lot of promise, and as you said, like hope, hope springs eternal, and so our faith is based on actual hope of Jesus, and uh, you know, not some silly hoping of baseball. baseball. Well, I like this fan graphs much better for the White Sox. They got them picked to win 74 games. Hey, all right. Still third place, but 74, we're inching up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a long baseball it season, is, isn't it? It is. Like, yeah. I just wonder... How quickly it will happen before you or I begin to lose hope Oh, I, for our I, team. Well, you know, I don't have much hope right now. Well, yeah, and I never lose hope. You know, I just get real after a while. <laughs> I'm just realistic going into this year. Yeah. Like I texted or talked to somebody, I was like, my only hope is I have a manager that doesn't fall asleep in the game, <laughs> especially in the first inning. <laughs> like I'm setting my bar pretty low what I'm expecting out oh, of my manager. It was a rough year last year to be a White Sox fan You know, you in got, a lot of ways. You got that. Hopefully our manager doesn't throw, do intentional walks with two strikes and two outs on a hitter because mm-hmm. that that worked out really well the one time we did that. Yeah, it did. Hopefully, and, and don't question that. Nope, I'm not questioning it. He's a <laughs> Hall of Fame guy, and he also, you know, was taking advice from the fans in the stands. Yes. <laughs> so. There's, See what a great year it was. I mean, all those wonderful memories. So how are you gonna? You know, top that. I'd rather have memories of them hoisting the commissioner's trophy at the end of the season <laughs> at their own stadium. Oh, boy. You know, I've only seen them hoist that trophy once. So, yeah, what else goes on in the spring, PD? I mean, that's my, this, like... Probably my favorite, besides baseball, the warm weather. Oh, yeah. Like, to get outside again, to see the grass starting to turn green, and trees, trees budding. budding. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then, you know, I'm sure you can relate and any of our dog owner friends out there, your dog's not tracing in all the snow and mud and dirt. It's yeah. bad. Well, yeah, now we're in that muddy season. Thing. And, oh, man, we have a big old towel at the door and you always got to stop them and wipe off their paws and, and all that. Madison doesn't like that. Yeah, I know. I think my guys are finally accepting their accepting fate. Accepting their fate. They're like, oh, boy. Here Here's he a, comes. Oh, this guy. Comes guy. with the towel. Yeah, but, yes. but uh, yeah, so summer, all of that. Summer, you don't have to worry about that as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We do get some more thunderstorms. I do like a good thunderstorm. Yeah, you know, at night kind of helps you sleep a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the grass starts to get green and, you know, people start, you know, working over their flower beds and their gardens and their vegetable gardens and all that and... You know, making the yard look nice again. Mm-hmm. All the, all the new uh, flowers popping up. All the perennials, like I believe, what spring cleaning they call it. Spring cleaning. Yes, our neighborhood has a spring cleaning on the April twenty second. Is our designated day, and we can basically throw whatever we want out to the curb, and it will be it will be oh. taken away for free. Wow! So we have great plans um, to maybe. You know, get a lot done this year. That almost, you know, that spring clean, what you're talking about, that reminds me of like Jesus dying on the cross that we, it's like we took all of our sins to the grave mm-hmm. and they just, Jesus just took them all away. He took them away. He's not like, you know, sifting through, you know, there's no questions asked. He just mm-hmm. taking away your garbage. Right. You know, the garbage of your sins. And so that's, that's, I have to admit, that's probably greater than what the city, your t- township is doing. Yeah. So like, you know, maybe. Rather than, um, you know, equating, like, if I get rid of all the stuff out of my garage and or my public storage, I'm hopeful that my public storage on Easter will look as empty as the tomb. And that will be a nice thing, because then you don't need that public storage. Then I don't need it, and I can close it out and 
you know, you know, utilize those funds for some other thing and even maybe have room in my garage to park my car. Wait, is that what garages are for? Yeah, that's what they're supposed to be for, but it's funny, you know, every time we get the garage cleaned out and we start using it, well, then all of a sudden it starts filling up and like, okay, well, one side and now it's both. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, effort going there. Doesn't that kind of feel like how it is with our sin? Like we can be going well, we get it all cleaned out, and then just one little thing of clutter comes, and then it just builds upon that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like you get used to all the clutter and all the junk in your life. And, and you don't uh, want to get rid of it. And you don't want to get rid of it. Or you just like walk by it, and you say, like, oh, yeah, someday I'll take care of that. And maybe that's the way with our sinful actions, too. Like, you know, someday, someday I'll get, I'll, I'll get better. I'll change. Yeah, right. Oh, it sounded like we had like uh Monty Python. Monty Python, yeah. but I was thinking of our puppet friends. Oh yeah. Jim Dandy. Jim Dandy. Sound like yeah, I don't know if you know Jim Dandy. That was my Jim Dandy impersonation. That's, that sounded pretty good as a Jim yeah. Dandy. Well, thank you so much, chap. Maybe you should go like on the impersonation circuit of like Jim Dandy. <laughs> I hear there's a high request for that. Yeah, I mean he I mean, he's on tour. Oh, that, that's where he's at? He's on tour? Yeah, he's, he's across the pond, you know. Oh, back home. Visiting, back home. Back home, visiting the, the yes. main, the homeland. The, the homeland. And but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes spring we, we clean out all of our junk, and uh, that's a good good connection to our sins. Right, and so we got the warming up, you know, spring cleaning, baseball. March Madness is kind of wrapping up. People love some tournaments. No, thankfully I did not fill out a bracket, so I'm loving the upsets. Yeah. I don't know if you ever got your bracket filled out. I didn't. Out. So what I'm trying to fill one out, and like here I am, it's Thursday again. Uh, the Sweet 16 is going to start up. So I, I threw out a Sweet 16 bracket to my family. I'm like, hey, fill it out. Nobody's done it, not even me. And oh. so we're we're pathetic. I just didn't fill one out, and it's wonderful. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and so, like, the flowers, I was thinking of the flowers, like, so, on Easter, uh, I don't know about everyone else's church, but here at Emmanuel on Easter, our altar is just really adorned with many beautiful flowers of varying kind, many of which are the Easter lily. And it gives a beautiful smell. Oh, my it's goodness. It's a nice aroma when you walk into the sanctuary at 5 in the morning. 5 in the morning, and uh, that is what hits you first kind is of the wakes aroma. you up a little bit. It does, and it's glorious. It is just so marvelous. Because, I mean, I know I'm not probably the most awake when I stroll in that day. No. No, but like, you know, you can tell that the flowers are there because, I mean, we have a long aisle to the yeah. altar and man, that, that aroma is filling up the space. Yes, it is. And it's just beautiful. It's our, sanctu- our sanctuary, mm-hmm. especially we have the little cross kind of display with them. Exactly. Yeah. Our, and- our wooden cross is like um, packed with some varying kinds of flowers and mm-hmm. it's really nice. And obviously, that's really the best moment of springtime is that Easter celebration where we remember that our sins have been washed away. Yeah, and we've been spending six weeks in Lent, you know, kind of in a time of, you know, repentance and uh, reflecting upon our sinfulness and, uh, you know, focusing on the work of Jesus at the cross. And so, you know, all of that just kind of culminates And, uh, you know, our sins are forgiven on Good Friday through Christ on the cross, and we're victorious on Sunday with his resurrection. Where I get to shout some words that I can't say right now. I know. Yeah. Oh, hold it back, man. I'm holding it back. I know you've been really chomping at the bit. I've been chomping at the bit, but, you know. To say that word. Two and a half weeks that I think I can say. I know. I know. Two and a half weeks, but we do get Good Friday, which is probably one of my favorite services of the year. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, with. The getting darker in the service, and then the strepitus at the end. The, the what? You, you strepit- got a sore, th- sore throat? No, no, strep, no, strep? no strep throat. Strep throat? The strepitus is we, you slam the Bible, or where we have the contraption, I believe, Tim made. <laughs> yeah, so wooden blocks. The wooden blocks that we just slam together. Yeah, that's noisy. It is. Ooh-wee. That'll wake you up. That, and then for the whatever one of us is carrying that candle out at the end, <laughs> that's always a danger. In the dark, yeah. But I still remember... One of my first Good Fridays here when we had you pretend to fall down carrying the cross <laughs> yeah. to see if anybody would help you up. Yeah. Yep. And uh, 
one of our wonderful members uh, who's now with the Lord came and helped me and asked, are you okay, Pastor? I just love that about him. Arthur was his name. And and then the, uh, somebody else, uh, Tim, came and helped me out. And uh, Tim S. And uh, so... That was that was that was interesting for yeah. sure, but um, yeah. So like, the flowers just really uh, seem to bring about, um, you know, um, newness? peaking uh, peaking our senses and something new. Yeah, something fresh, alive. You know, Jesus is alive, so it's always pretty cool. Right, and you know, you think about how they come up and just spring up, just as like, mm-hmm. you no, know, we get that new life through our baptism, and how we spring up from that. Yeah, you know, we get a lot of. Um, I w- in our front walkway, we have tulips, and I uh, can see the blades of the tulip uh, flowers breaking through the ground right now. And uh, then we have something called jonquils. They're always early bloomers. They're like a yellow flower. Um, but they don't they don't hang around too long in flowering stage and mm. I don't know a whole lot about flowers but like those I know because I you know I walk by them every day I'm like oh stuff's coming out of the ground yeah I don't know much about flowers either and I don't plant any nothing yeah. really grows at the house isn't it crazy like the smallest little things like get you excited about like a change in season you right. know when you see kind of that first bud of the trees mm-hmm or even like, and I think I don't know if we talked about here. Or maybe it was gathering about like the birds, like seeing the rob, first robin yes. or morning dove of the season. Yeah, or the first cardinals. You know, exactly. even even though I'm you know a Cub fan, I love cardinals. St. Louis. No. Okay. North you love the American. Sa- North you love American the St. Louis Cardinal. cardinals. Okay, that's what I hear here. <laughs> but yeah, but the seeing those birds that kind of migrate south, coming back, so it must mm. be a sign that the warmer weather is on its way and. That's a great news for somebody like me who's not a winter person. Yeah, the other day I saw something on social media, probably Facebook, and it was must have been it was some lake in Iowa maybe, and there were thousands upon thousands of Canadian geese flying up in the air in like this enormous murmuration, which it just looked like a cloud of geese. And there were some on the lake, and as this cloud of geese are flying over, others would just start flying up. They would get up off of the ice or the water or whatever, and they were just swirling around. And they said, I mean, this was had to have been close to, I don't know, a million birds. I mean, it was just enormous. And they're like, this is a sign that spring is here because they're getting ready to fly north. And uh, they said that they haven't had this kind of migration in years. So it says a lot about how the Canadian geese have come back, you know, because mm-hmm. they were much lesser in population. But yeah, things like that. I think I always got my eyes up to the sky, you know, around this time, like, okay, what's nature doing? Like, mm-hmm. what are the birds doing? Because they know, you know, they're mm-hmm. they're making a big commitment on their migrations. So. Right, so it's crazy all those different signs that God gives Mm -hmm. us to say, hey, weather's warming up. Yeah. And how he ingrains that into those animals that they know just kind of instinctually, I would say. I think you're right. That it's time to go back home. Yep. You know, like the hummingbirds, um, you know, all sorts of other kind of Mm -hmm. uh, orioles, bluebirds, you know, those are early spring birds. Well, there's one thing that I'm hoping doesn't come back to Emmanuel. That's the goose and the oh, geese that yeah. we get up. You know it. They they nest in the same roof. place every year. That's part of their deal. They love our roof. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see them. And then you got to watch out for that goose. Yeah, and then how about the one year we had ducks in the courtyard? Yeah. <laughs> the little ones were waddling out the front door. Our principal let them out. And that was pretty and cool. And everyone's trying to see the baby geese or baby ducks or anything we've had. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're like a little Noah's Ark here. We are. We're, you know, we're very, you know, bird friendly. And for some, from time to time, you nature. see some dogs here. Yeah, <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, so um, that's that's why, you know, spring is really exciting, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, you know, because it, um, the other day, uh, over the weekend, I saw someone flying a kite in the, the yeah. park behind our house. Really? And I think that's a sign of spring. Yeah, and like, well, when I was driving to lunch today, I was going down 
Colfax towards Northwest Highway. Saw the kite in the tree. <laughs> yeah. It looked like Elsa or somebody from Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I saw it up on the tree across from O's Field. I was like, oh, poor person lost their kite. Yeah. I was thinking of an old Charlie Brown phrase. It's the kite eating tree. <laughs> Charlie Brown would always like try and fly his kites and this one tree called the kite eating tree would just eat them up. Yeah. I don't know. I was never a good kite flyer. I, you know, it, I was hit and miss on it because, like, I remember one time being in a park by my parents or where I grew up, and that that kite was way out there, and like the pull on the the string was crazy, and um, I think I was able to pull it back in, but it was way up there, and that was like pretty rare. Most times, you know, they're diving down and crashing to the ground. Or now, when you were at Emmanuel, we had this. When I was in elementary school, we had kite day. Oh, cool! Where everybody would bring their kites, and you'd have this opportunity in the afternoon. They have like just everybody goes outside and flies their kites. I like that kite day. We should do that here at Emmanuel. Bring it back. Bring dude. back kite day, even though it wasn't here to begin with. No, but we'll bring it. Well, and and remember the different kind of kites there were. There was like the paper ones. I don't know if you had that, but there was like it was like a cross um, of the wood, the wood cross, and then you know it was like a diamond shaped kite, and then you had a tail, and then we called them bat kites because they were like the more plasticky ones, smaller, and man, those could go like all all over the place. Yeah, and I was thinking of like Chinese lanterns that you can put up and up. In oh the air. yeah. Can write messages on them. Right there, there were those box kites um, yeah. that that had that kind of uh, look to it. But yeah, kites. I can't tell you the last time I tried to get a kite up in the sky. Yeah, we need to bring kites back because that yeah. was a thing back in the seventies, eighties, and maybe nineties. Yeah. yeah, you don't see kids with kites too often. No, what's up with that? What's the deal with no kites? Well, they get eaten by the tree they, eating <laughs> the, the kite eating tree. The kite eating tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, yeah, and I think that's another sign too of spring is like you see more kids out playing if you have kids in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of kids playing, I drove past the high school by your house the other day and there was the girls' field hockey team, you know, oh. out on the practice field playing and the tennis uh, players were out in the tennis courts. And, okay. And so that's a sign of spring when you see like, you know, High schoolers or just, you know, kids playing organized sports outside. Right. I know I see one of our youth posts in their JV baseball games for Palatine High School and had and a little disappointed. They played Cary Grove uh, this week and Palatine beat Cary Grove. A little sad there that the mm. Trojans couldn't pull that game out. <laughs> you know. Wow. I asked if it was at CG and the youth said, nope, at Palatine. I was like, oh, you didn't get to see the great alma mater of mine. Yeah, yeah. The lovely Cary Grove. Because, well, your kids would have played They, they played over there. Um, both my, my boys and girls did. And, uh, yeah, Cary was always a good baseball and softball team. And they have pretty good fields over there. Because, yeah, because I think the main ones, they're right on, like, Three Oaks there right by mm-hmm. the road is the yep. main varsity field probably. and. No, I was a product of Cary Little League Baseball for a couple of years before I went back to the Grove for Little League. Okay. So Peter's Bakery was the sponsor. Oh, wow. Good old Peter's Bakery. That's a good good sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's so. something other day I was like, I wonder if I can remember all the baseball teams. like when Because I remember when I think after Peter's Bakery actually got like the teams like oh, where you got yeah, to wear yeah. like the MLB teams. Mm-hmm. like There was a Royal, I think, at one point, a Yankee, a Rocky. And a brewer. Wow. I think those were the teams. My first team in Instructional League, we, we had football names. Oh, that's so odd. I know. And I was on the Packers. Uh, uh, I know. I had a green T-shirt that said Packers and baseball pants and green pants. Well, that was just getting you ready for your years at front. Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And just a life of you know conflict with the Bears and the Packers. But It's okay. It's going to change this year. Yeah. So we were the Packers, and our sponsor was Centex Corp. I don't know what they were. And then I went to the minor leagues, and um, I was number seven. Because that Thank was you, my, Mantle. Well, Rick Monday, you know, local guy. So, sure. Yeah, I was number seven. And Palatine National Bank was uh, my sponsor then, which is no longer around. Used to be right downtown here. And then 
Pastor, then I went to the major leagues. And Not I, surprising with their skills. Uh, yeah, I was one year in the minors, and then I went early up to majors. Pass fries are there. Three years on the same sponsored team, Roselle Lumber. And that, that company might still be around. They were We were a red team. And then I was in Pony with Schomburg Toyota. It was a yellow jersey. I hated Ugh. that thing. Yeah. I'm not a yellow yeah. person. So then I was out of Little League at that point. So but yeah, it's funny how we can remember, remember those, those silly things. Yeah. But do you remember when you'd go like um before you started the games, you had to go get your picture taken? Team picture day. You yeah. know, like you'd go to some school and everybody'd be dressed in their uniforms and you have to line up and you know, and then oh, if your parents wanted the individual pictures, you had to hold a bat, and you had like a stadium background behind you. I don't know if we had the stadium background, but I'm also thinking. I remember one year when I was with, uh, I think it was the Rockies. Our manager, our coach, one of the dads, he made like baseball cards of all of us. Oh, that's cool. Where I mean, it was bigger, and it was just like our picture with a little like foam, but he had like the thing on the front, and then our stats for the season on the back of the card. Probably wasn't a very good hitter. Didn't didn't speak to my uh, defensive prowess. <laughs> that's where my skill lied in baseball was in defense. Yeah. Hey, oh, when you were in Cary Little League, did they have like a little concession stand at the fields? Yeah, because we played at the fields kind of behind the train tracks, like a little bit down from where the uh, train station is. Okay. Can't think what they were called, but yeah, I do remember. Was that was that Lions Park? And Cary, no, because Lions Park, I think, is more down at like 14 when you make the turn where you either go across the train tracks or I think. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember that one having like as a kid – they had like a, you could see it from the road, but they had a water fountain that was like a giant lion. Oh yeah, that you would stick your head in oh, to right. get the yes. waters out in a lion. You had a head. bubbler, a bubbler, you had a bubbler. But so, yeah, I remember over at Birchwood Park they had um, concessions, and you know after the game, kids would run over there, and that was a lot of fun. But yeah, but I feel like most people like kind of did the whole like. Uh, you know, the mom the moms would bring, you know, the food in, mm. the snacks. Oh, That's how yeah, we yeah. usually did it. Yeah, I don't think we had that. I don't remember that, like our, where we were responsible to bring in a snack when I was going through. But um, that was a long time ago. Yeah, so I don't know. I got really nothing else here on our topic. Yeah, so, you know, um, it's just enjoyable that spring brings something fresh and certainly within our faith. As we said, we come through Lent, a time of reflection, repentance, penance, and, uh, you know, we see what Christ did for us, and uh, that that causes great joy, and to where we can say uh, a word that is of great praise. Yeah, so we'll be saying that in two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. Hope everybody has a great preparation for Pat Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday this Sunday, and... Hope to see you around at Emmanuel with Palm Sunday, Confirmation, then going into Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Come and join us. Mm-hmm.